Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Colleen, if you're new here. I am pleased that you're here with me today. So today's going to be uh, an inside day for sure because it rained all night here. The tops of all of our mountains are covered with snow and I thought this would be a good day to get um, some things done indoors. And so today I am going to put my bread maker to use. Um, some people get a bread maker and they um, only you know, do the odd loaf of bread in it, but we use ours on a weekly basis. And I only use my bread maker for making dough. I have never baked bread in my bread maker. I always roll it out and put it in a pan or turn it into something else. So today I'm gonna to do a couple of different things for you uh, using a bread maker. And I will uh, gather up what I need and I'll be back right after this. I've got everything rounded up. I've just brought my bread maker over here briefly to show you what I have. It is certainly not a high-end bread machine. It's a Hamilton Beach, uh, which has served me really well for the past four years. Like it's been like a workhorse, and I would definitely recommend it if you were looking for one to purchase for the first time. So you can't really tell because I'm almost worn it off but it says cycle here so when I have everything into my pan and I put it into the machine I just have to go to cycle and click it until it goes to number eight which is the dough cycle it's pretty simple so today I'm going to make a brown bread and I have here some warmed water I'm sorry warmed milk and it's just warmed this is a one and one eighth cups of milk into the pan. I'm going to feed it some sugar. And today I'm going to use brown sugar. And I should say that I'm making brown bread, um, which, you know, not everybody eats brown bread, but we do and we enjoy it. And that's two, three, four tablespoons of brown sugar. This recipe goes together so quickly. I'm not sure why people opt out because if you're going to have an inside day anyway, you might just as well um, get your machine all set up and let it work in the background while you work on other things. I have other cooking projects I'm going to work on today, laundry to do, floors to sweep, all those things. So I'm going to let this work while I do all of that. So now, I need a teaspoon of yeast. I'm using just um, a Flushman's Quick Rise yeast. I don't buy special um, bread machine flour or bread machine yeast. I just use this. And I need a teaspoon of salt. And I shouldn't pour it over there in case it gets away on me. And I need four tablespoons of butter and I am going to measure it as I know how and our, our butter comes with a wrapper on it that has the measurements on the side of it so you can just lay the package beside the butter and cut where you need to be. So I've got that in there and I think I'm down to the last couple of things I'm just going to double check. I need one and a half cups of whole wheat flour, and I, uh, I'm down to the last of it in this bag. So I'll get this cleaned up before we open a new one. And, well, there's more than one for sure. Tip a little back. One. Well, let's see if I have to open the other bag. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say that's one and a half right there. And then I need one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. And 
I think this is just uh, all, all purpose. It's not bleached or unbleached or, well, maybe it's bleached. It definitely doesn't say on the bag unbleached. Whoops, I need one and a half. And that's one and a half cups of flour in there. And I'm just going to set these over on the side so that I'm not having to scramble them out of the cupboard when I start the next recipe, which will be, you know, an hour and a half down the road. Um, I'm not expecting company. I have no reason to worry about putting it away. It'll be there for my convenience. So now it goes into my bread machine. I'm going to set it on the dough cycle. And I'm going to let it go uh, for the full 90 minutes. And then I'll bring it out, I'll bring you back, and I'll show you what happens next. going to take a regular pan this is an old aluminum pan I've had for years I have two of them and I'm just going to grease it well because my bread is about ready to come out of the bread machine so I want to be ready when that happens because I'm going to turn that bread machine right around and Put it back to work again so that can work for several jobs for me in the same day while i'm cooking other meals and while i'm doing my laundry and just generally um, doing a day's work at home I, I, um, I need these things to all happen at the same time and i'm telling you so many people don't use their bread machines and it is i i feel like it's such a blessing to have it because we're eating healthier bread, we're um, not wasting any because we can cook exactly the amount that we need for us for a week. And um, there's so many other things that I can do with it. I love to be able to gift bread. And my, actually my neighbor next door, who sometimes you see when she's going in and out through my kitchen window here, uh, we live in a mobile home park and that's my close neighbor. Her name's Annette, and I appreciate her. She's a great neighbor. Anyway, she's, I took her a loaf of bread one day, and she said, you really should share that on your YouTube channel. So I'm doing that today uh, for Annette. And um, anyway, uh, any minute now, we're going to hear that machine beep, and then I'm going to get the bread out of there, like on cue. There we go. I've got the bread. I'm just going to tip it out into my hand, which still has a bit of grease on it. I'm going to set that aside for a moment because we're going to go back to it right away. The bread is oh really nice. It's picked up a really nice uh, body to it. I'm very, very pleased. I'm never disappointed with this. I have to say the only time I had a loaf of bread fail was when I used yeast that was past eight. That won't be any good. So now I've shaped it a little bit. I'm going to put it into the pan with my bottom down just to get some grease on the top. And then I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to put it over there on the other side of my stove. There's a little light coming in the window, which should be plenty of heat. I'll cover it with a cloth and I'll let it rise until it's doubled in size. And then we'll go to work on this next bit. So here I am preparing for round two with the uh, dough maker, the bread maker, which I'm using to mix dough. And uh, so for this recipe, I am going to be making cinnamon buns. So I'm gonna start with one cup of lukewarm milk, whatever kind that you're used to having. I'm going to add to that some sugar. What do I need? I need a third of a, no, I need a half a cup of sugar. Remember, this is a sweet one, so you need that sugar in there. I need a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, which is about that much. I need two and a half or two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. I need 
one third of a cup of butter, and this is just soft butter um, that's been sitting on the counter, so it hasn't been out for a really long time, but it uh, is plenty soft for this recipe. Oh, now I've got everything all gucky. I need two eggs. And these are extra large eggs, but um, just plain large eggs would work just fine. And then the last ingredient to go in here is four cups of flour. And this is just plain, all-purpose flour. And this recipe makes the best cinnamon buns. I actually have a nice um, top for it, like an icing, and these are delicious. Kind of like the kind you buy in the mall, if you get my drift. Anyway, that's all of those things taken care of that I put out here on the counter. So I'm going to put this into my machine and I'm going to set it up for uh, on number eight, which for me, that's the dough setting. And it will go there, it'll mix it, it'll rise up for its first rise, and then it'll let it rest. And it takes an hour and 30 minutes to go through that process. And in the meantime, I can be working on something else. I, I hope you're getting that, that you can use this multiple times throughout the day while you're working on other things and let it do all the hard work. Okay, here we are, loaf one, out of the out of the oven this is beautiful it's cooked in there at 375 degrees for 35 minutes and I am just gonna make sure it's loose which it is and I'm going to just top it off with a bit of shortening and that will be the first of the bread machine projects finished off. I'll let it sit for about 10 minutes in the pan just to rest because brown bread can tend to be um, a little doughy, a little softer, if you will. So we're going to let that soften or let that sit up. I'm going to put it over there on the other side of the stove where it was rising and the bread machine just beeped. So I know that our cinnamon bun dough is ready for the next step. So the first thing I'm going to do is just butter an eight, what is this, a nine by 13 pan. I'm just going to add a little butter to it because they do have sugar in them and they will stick if they're not treated properly. So we've got that done. I'm going to set that out of the way. Let's move a few things around here. Grab a rolling pin and the basket. Now, as you can see, this has risen right up to the top of the pan. It's warm because the machine's keeping it warm. And it's a beautiful and light recipe and now the trick is to get it molded out to the shape we want it. I feel like I should maybe put a little bit of flour down on this board. Make it a little easier for us to move it around. And we want to stretch it into a rectangle. And we're going to cut this rectangle into 12 buns, so we just need to work, work away at it. And you can do that by pulling it or by rolling it or both. In this case, we're going to do both. And this, this having a bread machine, I think every house should have one. Now, I don't know if you can hear it. Maybe you can. Sounds like farts. Um, the air. I'm pressing the air out because this has a lot of yeast in it. And we're rising it quickly. So there's a lot of air in there. 
Now you want to get this fairly thin, but not super thin. We don't only need maybe a couple of good rolls. I mean, turns to make a good roll. I'm just going to do a little more sculpting here because this end is a little skinny and the top, there we go. I feel a little better about that. Now, we need a half, a third of a cup of melted butter and I have it in a dish. I'm just going to throw it in the microwave and melt it that way. I'll be right back. That's melting in the microwave. I'm going to grab some brown sugar and a bowl. And into the bowl, I'm going to measure three tablespoons of cinnamon and one cup of brown sugar. And oh, I can make a mess doing this. very often because we eat it and we eat it up pretty quickly but today I have a plan to share it with some of my family so as long as there's a plan in place right and I haven't taken the baked goods for a while so I think this will be a nice treat for them you're just going to mix the uh, brown sugar and the cinnamon all together because we're going to sprinkle this on that melted butter on the bread. And we need to get it mixed fairly well because we don't want parts of it to be like more cinnamony than the rest. Okay, that's a microwave reminding me that my butter is ready. There we go. Now on goes the third of a cup of butter. And we're going to use a brush to brush it all around. Takes me a half a day to clean up after this. No, not really. And no, if I was a little more careful, I wouldn't have nearly the mess to clean up. We're going to get it to the outer edge and just really try to even it out as much as we can. And then we're going to take this sugar mixture and we're going to make sure we cover every part of this with some of our cinnamon sugar. And this is just quite a simple recipe and especially if you're using a bread machine and as I said it doesn't need to be the same one I have I did buy this did I buy this bread machine new I think I did buy this bread machine new but I know that I often see them at thrift stores where um, people have had kind of given up on them there's a reason there's a few reasons you might give up on a good bread machine and one of them is that you find you don't like the bread which usually just means you don't have the right recipe. Uh, one of the other reasons is that they um, make a funny shaped loaf and not everybody likes those funny shaped loaves. Now, I'm just gonna turn this and keep turning it. Um, but I think maybe the biggest reason that most people give up their bread machines, quite honestly, is that they take up a lot of space. So this, it's not something that you want to have out on your counter. It's not like it's a pretty appliance that you don't mind showing off like your KitchenAid. Um, I'm just squeezing the edges of this together. And they do take a, a quite a chunk of space. So I can understand when people want to hide them away and then you only hide them away for so long and you realize that they've been hidden and you're not using it. So I get that, but I have a shelf in the top of my pantry and it contains all my kind of uglier workhorse machines. 
like the bread machine and the dehydrator and what all's up there, a juicer and some other things. Now, if you want this cut in 12 equal pieces to go into that pan, so I'm going to look at about the center here. This does not need to be perfect. And you're going to do the center again. And then you're going to do each one of these sections into three, which will give you a dozen. machine it doesn't take any time at all to make these cinnamon rolls and I'm just going to put them three wide into this pan and I am going to cover them with a towel on the counter and I'm going to let them rise until they're double in size or about one hour it may not take the entire hour um, and then we'll get them into a 375 degrees degree oven for about 30 to 35 minutes um, most bread takes about that long so I'm gonna wash up my hands get this in the oven then I'll be back with the last project of the day that I'm making with my bread machine but these three projects I've made quite easily while I was doing other things around the house. I've made dinner and set it aside. It just needs to be reheated for later. I've got my laundry done. I've got my sweeping done. I've got some dusting done. And I've still managed to pull off three projects that um, came out of my bread machine. So here we go. I've got one cup of lukewarm milk. You could use water, I'm, I assume, but we want these to be rich. I am going to add to that a quarter of a cup of sugar. This takes a little less sugar than the cinnamon buns, half as much. I'm going to add to that two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. And I'm just using quick rise yeast. This is instant or rapid yeast. I'm going to add two eggs and try and be a little careful this time that I don't get any shell in there. And I think that we just need flour. Oh no, I better add some butter too. I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt to this and a half a cup of butter. This will make them nice and rich. And then we're going to add four cups of flour. And we're just about done. You can make a loaf of bread in no time flat. It's just whether or not you have space to store the bread machine. Because you certainly do have the time. It doesn't take any time at all. And... So the space and the inclination, I guess, because the time certainly goes by really fast. So I'm going to put this into the bread machine, set it on dough, the dough setting, and off we go. Now, while I'm still mixing things and working on things here, I'm also going to work on the icing for the cinnamon rolls. So I need a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. I need quarter of a cup, Let's see if I can get it out of here, quarter of a cup of softened cream cheese and these handy little packets that the cream cheese come in have measurements on them and I'm going to trust them. I just have to look to see where they are. Quarter of a cup. Uh, let's see in there. I don't think it would hurt to have a little more anyway if it did get away on me. I'm going to add one 
and a half cups of icing sugar or powdered sugar. Depends on where you are, what you call it. And the one thing about doing all these projects together, back to back, is that you can cut down on the washing up because you can use the same measuring spoons and so forth for each separate item. Now I'm just going to reach over for my recipe to make sure I haven't missed anything. Good thing I did, because sitting right here beside me is the butter that I need to go into this project. I need six tablespoons of butter. Wow, that guy's going to be noisy. Maybe he's trying to tell me he's uh, had enough for the day. I think that's going to be very distracting for you, and I apologize for that. So I'm just going to mix this up. And when it gets pretty thoroughly mixed, I'm going to add to it a half a teaspoon of vanilla. And then I'm going to set it aside so that it's ready when the cinnamon rolls come out of the oven. And then I'll show you what that looks like when that time comes. Hopefully you can see that I have the cinnamon buns out of the oven. I left them in the oven for 32 minutes at 375 degrees and I'm going to cool them quite a, quite a bit. They're still going to be warm when I put the icing on, but I am going to give them an opportunity to cool down so that all the icing doesn't melt and run away. So I will bring you back for a peek at the final project. In the meantime, I'm going to move on to forming my rolls. I have my dinner rolls all rolled up. Um, they're rising. They'll be the last to go in the oven, which will be good timing because they'll be coming out when dinner is ready. And now I'm just going to put the icing onto these rolls. They have cooled almost, they're almost cold now. And I am going to make sure that every one of them gets a bit of frosting. These are delicious. This is such a good recipe. I hope that you will consider giving it a try and that you'll really consider digging your bread machine out of the closet and putting it to work for you because it's certainly a good way to save money on baked goods and today we really could use all the help in that direction that we can get and it is also a way for us as with any of the things that we cook at home it's a way for us to be able to control uh, what's going into our food to make sure that we're not consuming things that um, are hidden in a product or that we have to carefully read labels for to make sure we're not consuming something that we wouldn't intentionally consume. Uh, these products can be hidden in so many places, it's crazy. Okay, what do you think, folks? I think these look delicious. And they're going to be uh, shared later this evening and with my kids and I'm looking forward to that as well so these are cinnamon roll blah, blah, these are cinnamon rolls that um, I made in my bread maker and I'm just gonna pull one out so you can see what they look like I'm going for a center I'll see how I make out because the center ones are my favorite. So hopefully I can get one out of here. Oh. Yep. And I'm gonna hold that up for you so that you can see how bloody delicious they look. And I'm gonna hold this up here so that you can see how really delicious this looks. And I hope today that you've enjoyed these videos, folks, and that if you have, you'll consider subscribing to the channel and hit that little bell so you get notified when I put up a new uh, video. 
I work hard on them and it's always great to hear from you and see your comments even if I don't get to answer everybody. I um, hope that you are all happy with what you see and I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. I will put a little photo of the finished rolls. Anyway, take care folks and I will see you on the next one. Bye bye. Thank you.